something called Coco Bar, and then I'm going to Coco teach Bar? you Coco Bar. All right, so pass one to everyone, please. One part. I have some tape over there, tape it in front of you, you can see, but you won't, just to give you an idea. We, I call the shot on this one. Okay. Then don't spend time really looking at it. What you want, there are the steps we're going to follow. Okay, the yield, forget a little bit about the yield. We're eyeballing a lot of stuff. Um, now, cock is what? It's a rooster. 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 Oh. What would they tell you about the rooster? It's going to be tougher. Older, darker, tough. Tougher. I it walks rooster. around. Yeah. Okay, so which means in order to break down the tissues, what would you do? Marinate it in some acidic solution. Wine being one. So what I would have done with a real rooster, right, and I did that when I was growing up. Rooster does a job, right, and at some point you say, hey, rooster. <laughs> okay, so I told, you, I told you what you do to clean a bird, did I? Yes, sir. Okay. So once you have, usually it's a dark meat, even the breath is a little tough but usually the most exercised part of the body are the toughest. If you do meat with Charlie, have you done meat? Who is doing yeah, meat yeah. with Charlie? None of you? So you will see the cuts, know your cuts, know your problem. No, no, no. If you don't know, you don't know, and you cannot you make mistakes. So anyway, uh, the dark meat, which uh, has a lot of flavor, most exercised, more connective tissues. Connective tissues are going to break down with what kind of cooking method? Right. Here, you see that? Here? Yes, if sir. you come for a job, you don't know all that, I don't hire you. If you don't have your life skill, I don't hire you. And today we're going to bake a beurre manier. I don't hire you. A roux, types of roux, you don't know, I don't hire you. You're coming from a school with knowledge. Get that? Yeah, sure. Uh, every class building block for the next. So, going back to that, those should be marinated about 24 hours, right? You don't over marinate, right? You break down the connective tissue with some acid. Yeah? Okay. You know, being perfect. So, your marinade will be red wine, thyme, garlic, carrots, celery, you name it, right? You marinate. Once my marinade is done, remove my pieces, right? Pat dry them, right? The best day is the best way to dry meat is to do what? Salt them. Hmm? Salt? Well, when you salt it, what will happen? You can do that, it's a dry curing, right? You add a little salt, then you refrigerate it, what happens, the salt is going to draw the moisture, and then there is a process of osmosis, which means all this liquid is going to be reabsorbed and penetrate the protein, right? That's what you may want to do when you do meat. Nicely salted, overnight refrigerated, right? So it's soaking the meat with these juices which are salted already, so it penetrates, right? So, for me, the thing, you remove them from your marinade, sieve your marinade, reduce the marinade by half. We don't do that, I wasn't here to do the marinade for you, but that's what you did last week. So I broke them into little pieces. You guys are going to have two pieces, definitely, the side and the leg, plus an extra piece, right? That's for you. You brought your Tupperware? Yeah, it's chef. If you don't have a Tupperware, you don't take food home. Get that? Yes, sir. Why? Because you, the taxpayer, are paying for that. You don't want to pay for this. <laughs> All right, so here my job is going to do at some point, right? I could do a little salt, it's going to drop, but it's going to do after. So one of you, why, why I talk, is just going to do something like that. Here? Yes, sir. Then we're going to flip them and do it again. That will be done. Now, those guys, are going to be braised. Braised, you break down the connective tissue of what temperature, cooking method, right? 
you have the combo. You see the combo, bracing on the right hand side, pretty much 210 degree below 40, right? This is the 200, you break 205, I think you're breaking the connective tissue. Combination means you're going to use two um, cooking methods. Two cooking methods. One is going to be dry. Dry is air or fat. So here you're going to go dry with fat to sear it, give it some nice color. And then we're adding the liquid two thirds of the way, cover it to brace. Here, there's okay. a brace. Know your cuts. Okay, so here we go. So one of you, Andre, I don't mind. And what you're in the mm -hmm. sure. Best thing would have been to do that yesterday to let it dry and refrigerate, right? So I don't like that. And here you're going to have about, so you peel it with your fairing knife, giving a nice little curve. You got it? Yes, sir. Those are going to end up getting into your braising liquid at some point and get tender and you have something. Yeah? Yes, sir. So I do the first one for you guys. And to make it easy, do all the bed, measure, cut it in half, and those guys are going to end up going into your... Here? Yes, sir. When you do that with your carrot, make sure they're all calibrated. You don't have a little thin piece and a big piece, put them at the same time. That's a big deal, is a cooking time for anything to be always calibrated. Now, next you're going to do, um, you're going to have asparagus. The asparagus, I want to blanch them. Is familiar, anyone familiar with blanching? Yes, sure. Can you explain? You boil it and then you submerge it into cold water. After. Salted water. Boiling salted water. Remember, the more that you put in your water, the cold yeah, so you may have to do by increment, right? So here we go. So we need to peel it. Here there are a lot of fibers. If you serve me something here, there is a natural breaking point. I'm not going to deal with that. You will see sometimes people cut it and discard that. I don't want you to get used to that. You're going to have it here on the side and roll it. And as you roll it, you're going to go here with the tail part. And you see that? Yes, yes sir. sir. Rotate. This is your support. You don't do that with your finger here and snap it. I don't have the product anymore. Here. So here is your guide and your support. Now one thing you want, don't put too much pressure. You want that to keep the cylinder intact. Yeah? Yes, sir. Now you're going to see, you're going to see around. And one thing you're going to see is there is no fibers. In case you see a trace of fibers, I put it in my mouth. I never come back to your place. Make sense? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You do everything 99% of the way or 100%? 100% problem. Here, I refresh your memory if needed. If you have a partner, whatever you do, make sure you agree. Because if one in a group make an error, what happens? The whole so group. client, everyone doesn't have a job. So I never would allow in my restaurant to have my employee to make a mistake. Right? You get it right. You got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Support. Here, you can pass that around, you will see. So you will have those. Those are going to go at one time in to get blanched. Pretty much to get blanched, there is something else in the future you're going to learn about is the pH. Right? PH. What is the pH? That's it, the acidity, acidity level. It's pretty much, yeah, basics and acidic. It's got from zero to 14, right? So those are going to be a little alkaline, right? So you may want to, some people are using baking soda to change the pH, right? We're not. Or lemon or vinegar to change the pH. We're not going to deal with that. Um, when you're done with the asparagus, you pass it back to me. So these asparagus, we're going to blend them. Next exam is boiling salted water, then you scoop them. How do you know if they're ready? Well, you get one and they kind of a little firm. Not fully firm, not fully tender, slightly firm because they will finish to be sauteed in some butter. Are we feeling the full length? Or no, 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 just here, all that is, is there is no fiber. 
right? It's very edible. Yeah, once we're done with that, they need to fit in whatever uh, bowl you're going to do with water. I'm going to do slightly different way today, right? What you need is steam, water is fine. I'm going to use my sauteurs. Give me a sauteur, the big one, on top first. Yeah, right? This is a sautoir. <coughs> sauteurs in front of you. There we go. So we can either get our boiling water, right, salted. What I'm going to do here, we're going to get a little bit of water, salt, and those guys are going to go here, right? Then we cover them, steams, they're going to green. You're going to get the trawler fire out. That's what we want in the trawler fire out. When those are done, well, we're going to remove them and place them in my ice bath. Ice bath, ice, bath and ice over there. You're going to get yourself ice, you're going to get yourself covered with water. When those are done, you plug them with your tongs, right? They will be covered, steam. At some point you remove, they're going to go fast, you check, they're fine, they're done. Deal? Yes, ice baths. And then after the ice baths, they're nice and cool. We set the colors, I remove them, and we're going to let them dry before we finish them. In the same stuff, we're going to remove this water, maybe in the ice baths, why not, right? It's just water. Or you can save the water, and you always save the water. We're going to use that today also for our potatoes. You will see the potatoes you turn in, we use them today, they're going to be steamed. So let's say I'm done, right? Here I have a little water left. Pour it in here. It's going to be for potato. Potato may be a little green, big deal. I hate to throw stuff away. Not only you have a lot of nutrients left in here, which is good, right? So those guys, do they fit? Not quite, right? So what we're going to do here, is at the end, this part is tough anyway, we want to get rid of it, and just for the show. Now that, what I could do, remember the apprentice, what do they do? They Let boil them. those, right, nicely tender, what do you do next? Process them, what do you do ne next? Sieve them, then you emulsify them with something and you have a dip. Yeah? Yes, Everything is reused, so I would be reusing that. Those, when they cook, they're tender, they're delicious. Delicious. So today, we're not going to bother. Once you have one like that, right? Remember when you serve, everything needs to be homogeneous. Let's say I do another one. Make sure they are the same length. And make sure they're all going to fit here. Yeah? So what you want, you make sure they're fitting. Cut that, use that as a guide for the, your next one. So you peel the next one, and then bop. Deal? Yes, yes sir. All right. Homogeneity, colors are what attracts the client. <coughs> so, I can put those back, please. We done here? Yeah? Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I'm going to let them air dry here, right? Can refrigerate them, yes. When we're going to use those, last thing you want is to bring the protein away to room temperature, right? Hmm. Because it will be the thermal shock. If it's too cold, going something very, very hot, what will happen to the muscle? Seize. It's going to seize, mm. always. So you always bring your meat, fish, to room temperature. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yes, and then usually it rest to get the juices to reincorporate. Remember, it's like a volcano. So what temperature should they be cooked at? 165. 165 for sure. But since we're cooking at 205, 210, braising, right? To, to, you can braise either in the oven, in the oven if I saw 210, right? Some people may want to braise in the oven because when you set your temperature in the oven, we know by doing stuff, if you make pate at some point, you're going to use the oven, right? Okay, forget about it, we're going to do that on the stove top. What kind of utensil would be using to cook? with the lid? Doesn't tell me anything. We're going to use a sit, sit we're gonna, uh, spatula. The, no. What to? Sautoir. Sautoir, why? The because we're soft. To keep lid. the sauce in. Okay, a liquid. Lid. Make sure it's fit. If you have evaporation, it's dated somewhere, evaporation, too much reduction. Yeah? Yes, sir. So, regarding our marinade today, right? 
since we didn't do it before, what I'm going to do, something very, very simple. You see that? Aromatics, thyme, a little bit of rosemary, garlic clove, everything is going to put in here. You're going to get your small saucepan. You're going to put everything in your saucepan, reduce it by half. Concentrate all those flavors. Here, yes, when we're done reducing by half, let it be in the saucepan. I'm going to go around with a sieve and we're going to add that to our chicken, right? Just to sieve all this extra stuff. Got it? I will be calling the shot once we're there because right now you have no idea where to start. Another thing you're going to do right away, we do have potato. Give me the saucepan again. You're going to have your ice bath. And once we get there, I tell you, you're going to get yourself water, at least that much of water, bring it to a boil. It's not for the asparagus. You can use a little bit for the asparagus if you want. At some point, for the cocoa you have the garnish of the cocoa the flavor, which is going to be that, that, and that. See that, those three? First is those guys. What will I do? Everything in due time. Those guys, you need to peel them. What's the best way to peel them, you think? Preparing them? Eh? Preparing them? Crush them? Crush them? No. no. You can go like that. The best way to do that, guys, remember your tomato? Mm -hmm. I gave a little insert in the skin, boiling water. The skin is going to get separated from the flesh by the boiling water. Two, three minutes, get your, so your what do you call that? Uh, Slotty spoon, remove them. You will have your ice bath ready for your asparagus, correct? First those, then it's going to be for the asparagus. Taste it in, yeah? Then it's popping. Going to remove in a second. Keep it in a container, the same container, right? They're done, they're peeled, they're ready. So that we do. Next thing you're going to do are the mushrooms. Mushroom, what you want to do is just to cut stem part, bottom, then those guys, so usually mushroom, I said this morning, you don't wash mushroom, yeah. especially the wild mushroom. You gently brush them to remove the, the, the dirt and then a slightly damp towel, that's mm -hmm. it. Flavor are going to dissipate and something else are going to gorge in water. Here you have 90% is water, okay? So you cut them in half after you remove the stem and we're going to quarter them. Deal? Back where they belong. Just quarter. Then, you guys are going to do, remember this water, remove the onion, we're going to skip this water, because at some point, remember when you turn in those potatoes, we're going to steam them. We're not going to steam them through steam, but by boiling them, we call them steam, right? So, those always make sure they're calibered, don't get a small one and a big one, because then that's it. Mm -hmm. One is going to be undercooked, the other one mushy. That's it, those are done. My water, after this, this guy, we're going to salt it nicely, osmosis, right? Nicely, you're going to taste your water, it's salty. Don't put salt, you have no idea how salty your water is. To be salty, they love salt, right? Otherwise, they're very insipid. You don't just add salt at the end to get the salt on the top, but nothing inside here. So those, I have my stuff back to a boil after the onion. Later, when I tell you, it's all about timing. When I tell you, they're all going to be in a boiling salted water, right? And here they become tender, but firm. Because I want to stop the cooking with ice and bring it back to a boil when we're ready to serve, to finish my cooking. So I will go around with your paring knife, you're going to go. They still are firm to the center, slightly, but they're ready, right? Then to stop my cooking, I'm going to ice ice cube in it. And when we're ready, crank it back up when we're finishing with the asparagus, with the everything. Here, yes, it's all about timing. If I tell you to go right now, you have no idea. No idea. You see, the toughest part is going to be about to time. Then I will call the shot, tell you. All right? So at some point, we're going to get the sautoir. Those guys, I'm going to use them. What kind of butter would you use? Clarified 
What kind of oil would you use? Yeah. Ice smoking point. Can you caramelize with Clarify. low smoking point? No. No. Okay. Yeah, you have your clarified butter. You are going to take one. When we run low, we make more. We made more with my other class already on Wednesday. So you all take one. You're going to scoop whatever is necessary in your sautoir to do the chicken. That's one of the first things we're going to do, okay? The chicken, I want it to get nice colored, right? There is something I didn't say right now, but it's going to come later. Uh, in order to scoop it out, if it's too cold, warm up your spoon on the flame. A good tablespoon, solid tablespoon, right? Yeah. Solid tablespoon of clarified butter. Mm -hmm. And then the solid tablespoon of clarified butter, we're going to add a good jolt of olive oil, right? If you want a higher smoking point, usually extra virgin olive oil is a finishing oil. You never cook with it, never. It's a low smoking point. So one which is used is like pure or pre or um, now they're always pressed. It's regular version. But it, the core press is the one which has a very low smoking point, extra virgin. Here you're going to see extra virgin olive oil. What, what do you call it? Not this one. The one in front of you maybe. Doesn't matter. It's a, it's a marketing gimmick for Americans. Mm. Oh. But you never, ever, ever going to mix an extra virgin olive oil with any other oil, unless you need to oil the smoking point. The finishing oil, we're going to use it later, okay? Yes, so, usually in your cells they're calling for bouquet garni. I'm going to just show you a bouquet garni. This is tomato paste. At some point, we're going to use it when we're going to put the chicken back in our sautoir. When the chicken has been marked, you're going to have half sheet pan with racks, right? You're going to place them on them. Just let them be. We're going to reuse the sautoir for mushroom. First, we're starting with the bacon, because the fat would be the fat for to saute the mushroom and to saute those guys, right? I tell you as we go. Then, those are done, mushroom, they're done, they're done. We can mix them all in a container. They're going to go back at the end, maybe 45 minutes before with the carrots, everything, okay? The chicken will go back into your sautoir, the marked chicken. We're going to add tomato paste. What is tomato paste made of? Never serve something you, have, you don't know, never, ever. If you don't taste your food, do not serve food, do not shop. Yeah. Here, pretty much, we have a paste of tomato. How do you get there? Concentrated. Chances are there is a thickener in here. Chances are the thickener might be what? Flour. Chances are some people have um, celiac disease or wheat allergy. You always read what you have. Now, here, I want those starches here to start concentrating a little bit, uh, to cook a little bit. I see you, okay? You can add your tomato paste like that or toss it a little bit to remove all the sugars, all right? So you will see, we do that in a minute. Um, what's that for? I got tape for the recipe. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking ahead, I love it, all right? So when you're going to get there, you're going to get your small saucepan that is going to go on. I tell you what's with there, okay? The other thing in your, in your, um, let me go by, please, me, please, me. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm just going to make one. Okay, bouquet garni, what it is, are stamps, whatever you want, they could be whatever you enjoy. Here, remember the party stamp, we save them. We're not going to do that, because I put already all the aromatics in the reduction. It's called reduction to concentrate the flavor, right? Get rid of the alcohol too. So you can put whatever you want, carrot stick, we have carrots, right? It's pretty much whatever herbs you enjoy having in your guy, right? So I can go and do my bouquet garni as is. 
but sometimes what I do is just to use a good piece of leak to keep it contained, right? Remember the old soup we made? Yes, sir. Okay, remember the, the leak part, the, the top leak part? Yes, sir. Do you have a quiz on soup? We're done. That's it. And here, what else would I do? Depending on your pot or DPT, blah, blah, blah. And voila. Make sense? Yes, sir. And this guy at the end, what you do with it? You remove it. You don't serve it. And here is your bouquet garni. What is a sachet? Like a tea bag? Yeah, it's everything loose, grains, whatever contained. So let's say you're working with a deep uh, stock pot. Right? Yes, sir. Let's say that your stock part, you have it sip on the side and have it on the side, right? Just remove it by hand. Business? Yes, sir. Yes, We're not yes, going sir. to deal with it. Good info. Eh? Good info. Thank you. Balsamic vinegar, please, and olive oil. Pass them to me. At some point today, you guys are going to have a salad, all right? So a salad, depending you did the class pantry, we don't offer it, which is too bad. Right? Really? Not this semester? Eh? Not this semester? Or? Yeah. And you learn a lot. I'm glad yeah. I took it when I did that. Yeah, you learn a lot. Guys, you're going to, there are two types of dressing. Temporary and? Permanent. Stable. Stable. <laughs> And you also have the semi-temporary. Give me an example. Uh, Hollandaise. Hollandaise, yes, because okay. it can break. Which we're going to make. Okay. Know about that. To get it stable, guys. Hey, oh, how many of you to look for balsamic? No balsamic there? We can't find it normal. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, here you're going to learn water, salt, okay. Whatever, here we're going to make something temporary. It's too unlike liquid different density liquid which are forced together. We know that fat and water don't mix, yet we want them to mix. The idea is to break the fat into thin droplets, and the reason you do that is because it is going to become homogeneous. And by becoming homogeneous, it's going to really nicely coat. What kind of green do we use? Usually, with, the, with our lettuce, tender greens, right? Okay. Which are mild, usually mild, spicy, bitter. Yeah. You went mm -hmm. through that. I used to make my own mix with water. You use spinach, can be spinach. Oak leaves, there are. Baby romaine, there might be. Any. If you have anything spicy, tat soy, whatever, might be in here. Dear, yeah, the sure, babies, sure. they're very tender. Last thing you want is to put a stable emulsion which is a mayonnaise, which require an emulsifying agent. Mm -hmm. um, mustasa. Can you name an emulsifying agent? Egg? Seeds. Egg yolk. Uh, we go through seeds, we did, it's not the class to do that, but there is three components in the seed. One of them is a protein part, right, which is going to be the emulsifier, or the best one being the egg yolk, egg yolk right? At some point, we're going to make a mayonnaise here, right? That's a stable one because you're using an emulsifying agent, right? So here, this one is going to be temporary. The idea is to make something homogeneous. How do I start? Vinegar is up to you. Oil is up to you. Your choices, right? Flavor, have your database of flavor, so they're going to match perfectly well. Make sense? Yeah, sure. I want to use uh, sesame oil. Well, I could if I make a... a <coughs> Sesame oil is very potent. Finishing oil too. So here I would go start with that. And here I do it for all of us, okay? On your midterm, you will have to do it yourself. Salt, dissolve in fat. The salt, dissolve in fat. No chef. I mean, car? No chef. Okay, so my salt should be going into what? The water base. Vinegar. Here? Yes, chef. You add your pepper if you wish. 
Next thing I'm going to do here is to make my emulsion. So if you want to use a little bit of that, it's fine. That's an emulsifying agent. For flavor, I would put just a little bit. But here, I'm not going to use any. Right? And here, what happened? Tau this. Something you must learn. Usually, it might be slightly damp. What will happen if I do that right now? What happened to the ball? How do, you, how do you prevent that from happening? Your meter, you will have that to do, right? Make sense? What happened next? Is that stable? I can use both my hand. I don't have to hold this one. See that? Little trick. Now here is another little trick I like to do. Give me my chef knife. Whenever you're going to use those, need air to spill, right? What I do, I use a heel here, and a little pet is going not to drizzle all of it. Make sense? Yes, sir. That's part of cooking, too. Cooking is everything, right? He's doing that, doing that. Did we cook yet? No. So, here, what I will do, usually the ratio, and you go little by little, and what you're going to see is, is going to become very homogeneous. Don't pour everything at once. Here I'm breaking down the, the droplets of fat in suspension in the water. Okay, we call it temporary. And all of a sudden, what you guys are going to see, so the amount of vinegar, whatever, is up to you. Usually it's one to two, one to three. Okay, and here what happens, what you see right now, how many, do you see two different ingredients here or one? One. One. So you see what happened here? Usually the fat should be at the top, right? Mm. You will see what happened later. It's going to separate. So when we ready, later, put it back, toss it, and then I show you how to dress a salad properly. You probably have been to all the restaurants where you have pools or dressing, where you have key of that, it's going to wilt right away with fat. More with fat than with water, hmm. by the way. Right? So here we go. If I go to a restaurant, you give me something like that, I walk out, I leave my card, I'm a food critic, you're dead. You're dead. Don't kill the product. Make sense? Yes, sir. I'm not going to reuse it. We're good. All right, then. We do that later, okay? We finish it later, and I'll show you how to dress the salad properly when we're ready. When the braise is all ready, we don't station a kid, we come here and show you. Okay, now, you're all going to go to your station with what you have, your recipe, and you grab a clarified butter, butter on your way. And then I will be calling the shops.